Hello and welcome to Doubles and Trebles. Pie Man is back with myself, Adam Smido Smith, and we're here to just a general darts chat, really, Pie Man. There's all sorts going on, much of it away from the major TV cameras, but we're about to start major season from now on until Christmas for you know what. But yeah, what's been going on, Pie Man? They've been down under. I think they've had three um, PDC World Series events down under, two in Australia, one in New Zealand. Then they've been back to Hungary and Germany and Amsterdam. And we've got a controversial subject to cover as well between now and the next 10 minutes. Yeah, just a quick rundown. Obviously, a lot of people don't follow darts when darts isn't on Sky Sports and totally understand that. People have got other things to do. But saddos like me are watching it all year round. So I'll keep you up to date. Don't worry. So we did do a, a general darts roundup just before they went down under for the World Series. So we'll start there. Three events, as you said, two in Australia, one in New Zealand. And this is an the World Series, uh, an event that you've admitted yourself, you sometimes struggle to get your head round, but the general purpose of the World Series is to promote the game around the world. So, you know, they're trying to grow the game in the likes of Australia, New Zealand, Hungary, etc. So I, I'm a big fan of the World Series. It's not one to be taken too seriously. You've got to also remember, it gives the players a bit of a, a, a perk to being a professional dart player as well. They get to, to go and take their families to Australia and New Zealand and have some downtime. We also saw the US Masters as well, which was nice for darts to hit America. I saw some pictures of James Wade enjoying himself in New York. So, you know, wherever these boys can get a bit of a holiday and a bit of a rest before the busy months ahead, if it ups the level of quality that we see, I'm all for it. In terms of the actual events themselves, they were won by some very familiar names. Johnny Clayton, Michael Van Gerwen and Gerwin Price reigning supreme in those three events down under. Um Familiar names in the final as well, to be honest. MVG beating Price 6-5 in the first one. Uh, sorry, 8-5. And then Johnny Clayton beating James Wade in the second final before the two Welsh boys met. In the third final, the Price coming on top, 8-4 in that one. So we did see some decent performances from the qualifiers. Gordon Mathers did really well in what we saw of him. People may be familiar with Mathers. He's a tour card holder, um, someone we've discussed uh, on the channel in the past, he's quite a capable player on his day and he, he did really well. A bit of disappointment for Damon Hetter, who would have hoped to have maybe compete or contend for one of these titles back in his homeland, but didn't really work out for him or Simon Whitlock. But I'm sure he really enjoyed the trip home anyway. Now, I know you do have some thoughts on one of the invited players who uh, didn't do so well in this tournament, Fallon Sherrick. She had a tough time down under. The experiment has failed, Pie Man. Let's be honest. Um, I think Fallon Sherrod played four games down under in three different tournaments, only won one game, and the average across those four games was below 80. It is not good enough. This is an invitational tournament. Now, invitational tournaments across different sports, golf, for example, should be for the creme de la creme. This is not. Um, there's, the lo there's the local aspect, which I've discussed before, and I don't really like it, but I understand it. I understand that local players from Australia and New Zealand are going to be invited to the Australian darts, master, dart, uh, dart series or Masters, whatever you want to call it. Now, Fallon Sherrick, I know they've booked her in advance for this year and her um, coming out party, if you like, following her world championship efforts, which were way back in 2020 now, I believe, um, were COVID interrupted. Um, and it's kind of her, yeah, her world tour has been delayed if you like, um, and that's why it's happening now in 2022, but it is not good enough, Pine Man. She's averaging like 73 against a local Australian player, and then the PDC are tweeting that it's an upset, even though she was the outsider in a two-horse race. What we should say is, Pine Man, there's two sports covered on this channel, darts and horse racing. Both sports, amazingly, really, and by pure coincidence, operate whereby females can play on a completely level playing field. I don't think there's any other sport in the world other than racing, uh, horse racing and darts where that is the same. Mm -hmm. In the racing, you've got Holly Doyle, who is a superstar. She's brilliant. Rachel Blackmore in the jump sphere of, of, of racing over in Ireland, right? They don't, they don't get any um, 
They don't get any advantages over over males in terms of weight they carry, distances they have to run, whatever it may be. They operate on exactly the same terms as the male, as as they do in the darts. They have the same equipment, three darts thrown from seven foot nine and a quarter, same stage. That is a completely level playing field. So I don't care if you qualify for a tournament and you and you. I don't care whether you're man, woman, cat or dog. If you are qualified for the tournament through the proper means and you win, well done to you. But this is an inv- invitational kind of series. Um, but what we've got to remember is Fallon Sherrick has still not ever owned a PDC tour card. I believe she's tried to get one twice and failed to do so. It is a tough school to get through. Um, we've seen some players fall away and, and not be able to get the tour card back. But if you cannot qualify through the proper means, then you cannot play. Because, you know, and like you say, Paman, this is a perk of the job of the World Series, right? And there is an invitational nature to it, and you're not meant to take it too seriously, as, as you tell me. But this is not the only thing that that Fallon's been involved in, whereby I don't think that, that she deserves to be involved in. The rankings say that. The performances on the stage say that as well. We're already in a position in the World Championship where they guarantee that two of the two of the qualifiers of the 96, I think it is now, are guaranteed to be female because they come through female-only qualifiers. That is what some people might describe as positive discrimination. I just call it discrimination full stop because it, as has been proven, those two women invariably every year would not qualify through the proper means. So if you are the 97th and the 98th best player in the world, you are giving away your... Um, actually, no, it's not even that. If you're the 95th and the 96th best player in the world, you're giving up your opportunity to play in the World Championships so that they can put two ladies in. I know they're trying to grow the game, etc. But Fallon Sherrick, we've seen her. She did well, I think, in the Nordic Masters um, a, a year or so ago. She beat uh, Vandenberg, I think, in a, in a fantastic game, made the semi-final and got beat by a snake bite. Something like that. Great. But to go down under an average 76, 80 and 83, it's no way near good enough. And someone needs to say it other than doubles and trebles uh, YouTube. Well, I think a lot of people have been saying it on social media as well, To be, to be fair. Look, I I just struggle with the criticism element because I think I'm crit- I'm more critical of the PDC rather than Fallon. I, I feel like Fallon gets an awful lot of stick. It's not her fault that she's been put on this pedestal. The PDC are desperate for a post the star, aren't they, from the women's game? And to be honest, I'm not even convinced Fallon is the best woman player. I think Bo Greaves is is probably better than her, and I think we might see that in the next couple of years. Her emergence on the amateur circuit and now turning up at PDC uh, ladies tournaments and winning th- three or four back to back on a what is effectively her debut since she really started going for it. So uh, the, the landscape of women's data is going to be changing. Uh, I, I feel very sorry for Fallon that she gets the stick that she gets. But you're right. It's very unsatisfactory the way this has been handled. We can't keep putting her on a pedestal compared to everyone else. It was ridiculous of the PDC social media to be tweeting that it was an upset when she lost. She was averaging in the 70s. You wouldn't get this with any other player. Um, And if we want women to be genuinely competing alongside the men for titles in the future, we need to start treating them on more of a level playing field. And I think the Women's World Match Play was a fantastic event and a fantastic display of how good women's darts can be. But it also maybe showed us that they don't need handouts. They need to be given time to develop and play, you know, and get up to the required standard to to win a card at Q School. I have no doubt that they will get there in time. It's a very interesting topic and it's sure to be one that I'll um, elect debate among our viewers. So, uh, maybe leave that one there, but look, I'd be, I'm always up for debate on on women's darts. I think it's a very interesting uh, sphere. She certainly struggled it down under, and we didn't see Fallon, obviously, for the Euro Tour events, which are the others that I want to touch on in this video. So we've been in Hungary and Germany since uh, we last caught up on the general darts chat. The Hungary tournament, the first thing I want to say, the stars of the show in Hungary were the crowd. Yes. What a crowd it was in Budapest. The most engaged, respectful. It was like going back to the BDO days, but not in a negative way. I don't mean people like, you know, I don't mean deathly silence and people smoking fags in people's faces. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, genuinely engaged in the darts, no idiots. 
Um, and what you get with the little PDC TV coverage is you get to see what's going on in between matches. In between matches, they're playing rave music. The crowd's going absolutely crazy. But as soon as them two players start throwing, everyone in that arena was totally engrossed in the darts. And that's what you want to see, isn't it? When you're watching it as a genuine darts fan, you don't want to see idiots dressed as a dolphin starting fights while the game's on. You know, if you pay to go and watch the darts, enjoy it. Anyway, this is a really good tournament. Yet another one where I thought Dave Chisnell was finally going to get himself a win, but uh, he was edged out by Joe Cullen, which has become a bit of a theme for Chizzy recently in the semi-finals. Willie O'Connor, the star of the show, what a run he enjoyed, uh, knocking out the likes of Jose de Souza and Nathan Aspinall on the way to a final. I believe it's a first TV final for the Magpie. It's got to be, and uh, he didn't really turn up in the final. Joe Cullen made quite light work of him. But really good stuff for Willie O'Connor, a stalwart of the two, and I think a, a criminally underrated player. I'm sure you've seen me in the past sort of... Oh, I hate him, no pie, man, from a betting perspective. He, not, like, every time I'm with him, he gets beat. Every time I'm against him, he wins. He just really annoys me, but yeah, I love his walk on. I, I just think he's a really a really underrated player, probably because he doesn't look flashy um, and we don't see an awful lot of him in the... You know, he's not a top 32 player, but he's a nightmare at the World Championship for a seed. He always plays well at the World Championship. Yeah, yeah. Round one, round two, round three. You don't want to be opposing him lightly. So really pleased for him to get that moment. And I think he appreciated in his interview that he's not going to get to many PDC finals. And he was absolutely delighted with it. That kind of money can be the difference between a two card and not a two card. So fair play to Willie O'Connor in that one. And then we had the German darts open, which was uh, a really emphatic return to form for Peter Wright. We all know about his goldstone issues but for anyone that doesn't um he's had an ongoing problem uh with his health goldstones which eventually needed operating on he says he's come out of it much better but it did mean that Wright missed uh going down under and dimitri vandenberg ended up taking his place there but he got a little bit of revenge on vandenberg here because he played him in the final in germany and it was a really really high quality affair with Wright coming out on top eight six former housemates but they actually exchanged a few words in between these games and you know there was a little bit of bad feeling i think wright had criticized the way that dimitri had had conducted himself on stage that's since been put to bed but one to keep an eye on because they will inevitably meet again as two of the the better players on the circuit and uh you know th there was definitely a little bit of needle there which i enjoyed actually uh i i, I always like a little bit of needle as you know uh, Mervyn King fan over here. So, yeah, that, that was a really enjoyable event. And then the last one I want to touch on is the World Series of Darts Finals, which we previewed on the channel, uh, put up Michael Van Gerwen, but it was actually won by his adversary, Gerwin, Gerwin Price, beating Dirk van Dijvenboord 11-10 in a classic final. Dirk threw for it, but couldn't serve it out. Price just having a little bit too much for him in the latter stages. Smido, I know you watched that one. What did you make of that final? Yeah, just, just excellent. And, like, yet again, another one of the tournaments where Gerwin Price grew into it. I thought um, Dirk was pretty excellent throughout. He was fantastic on his doubles for large parts of, of games, um, although he had he missed a hatful. I think he missed 10 in one leg against Ryan Joyce on the doubles. But um, yeah, really Great good winning signs. against Johnny Clayton. Yeah, really good signs for Dirk, particularly on the doubles. We know he can score. And with a view to the, the World Grand Prix, particularly but um, major season as a as a as a whole for for Big Dirk, you know that I like him. I'm on record as saying he will win a big one at some stage. Um, I'm going to bring this up uh, virtually every darts video. I imagine now f between now and the end of time, I said Gerwin Price might not ever win a major <laughs> again. Um, the the World uh, Series finals isn't a major, but uh, but yeah, I think Gerwin Price is really in. It, it could he's really could be peaking at the right time. I've said on a different video, he looks refreshed. He's had a good time down under with his family. His injury seems to be cleared up now. He's concentrating on darts more than he has been for, say, the, at least the whole of 2022 to this stage. I think going price is very dangerous um, for all tournaments from now until the end of the year. Yeah, and I just want to give a couple of shout outs to some lesser heralded players that I think deserve it. I was very, very impressed with Karel Sedlacek on the European Tour this month. He's just been putting in some really, really strong performances, high 90s averages, and there's no fluke about it. 
Uh, I know he's a player that you have said in the past you, you think is is perhaps underrated. It's a real travesty that he managed to lose his tour card, yeah. but he's still managing to get his way into the European Tour events as a reserve. And then he's he's turned up and beating players. He's doing well on the Pro Tour when we see him, you know, making third round, fourth round. And uh, he's actually in that unique position where he may actually be doing enough on the European Tour and the floor to get his card back without even having to go to Q school. That shows how well he's done this year. And he is a man to keep on your radar for the World Championship. He'll be a nightmare draw for somebody, uh, said Lecek. I think he's maybe even taken his game to a new level since I last saw him. And uh, favourite on the channel, Josh Rock, making a first European Tour quarterfinal, where he eventually ran out of steam, losing to Dave Chisnell. But he was really, really good. Uh, he won an absolute cracker, 6-5. And... It's just a little glimpse into the future, a future, you know, I've said it, I don't say this lightly, a future world champion for me. And he, he really, really started to show what he can do in that year or two. Well, I mean, we got, hopefully we've got to live uh, for the next 25 years at, at least, Pine Man, because the amount of people that we have, individuals that we have uh, signalled <laughs> as future world champions is, uh, is quite a long list. So on that bombshell that Josh Rock will be a world champion, according to Pine Man, we'll end the darts chat there. There's all sorts of contents on the horizon for doubles and trebles, starting with the World Grand Prix. And I promise you, there won't be any other channel on YouTube that produces more darts content between now and New Year's Eve. That is a promise. Thanks for that watching. That certainly is. And we'll speak soon.